The Ryan Goodman and Tangway podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNX Media Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, who's on vacation again. Gary Tangway along for the Ryan podcast. Uh, brought to you by the exclusive wagering partner of CLNX Media Networks, FanDuel. FanDuel's a number one, is America's number one sports book. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Okay, Bob, uh, the international game is ongoing, the world games. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute. And I don't think it's something we've seen in Boston, unless you want to look at maybe Stoiko and Dino Raja. Uh, but just give us your thoughts. And I mean, you were there. God, man, you have so much good stuff on this because you were there when, you know, with the Olympics, you know, and, I, and you've told this story before how the Russia and and, and the Olympics were such an integral part in bringing the international basketball game to the forefront. Um, but just talk about the international game right now, how it came to be, and how it's really benefited the NBA. The international game right now, we've got every year, we now have annually over 100 players, inter, quote unquote, international players, players who are, who are born and, and raised out, out, outside the United States. And that's been going on now for a few years. So we've pressed that 100 player mark. Uh, it's no longer any kind of an eyebrow raiser to see a player from in, from uh, a, a country other than the U.S. Okay, um, they, they were you know we, we, the, the basketball is was a oh and the Olympics dates from 1936 and of course and we just dominated the world the first several Olympics 36 next one wasn't until 48 of course because of the war uh, and you know 48 we romped over 52 56 60 64 uh, 68. And then in '72, we ran into the 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 the, the heist in Munich, the, the disgraceful. I know the heist. Heist, I know. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that was that was a criminal dis- disgrace. And we came back in '76 in Montreal, and and at '80, of course, uh, we, we didn't go. Which uh, you know, and then '84, they the Russians didn't come, and then we hit Seoul, and we lost with our college kids to the Russian pros. Okay. Anyway, now. Um, the, the the turning point in, in in where we are, how we got where we are today, is the dream team. The dream team inspired the world. People here will never not not, and not enough people understand why the dream team came about. The dream team did not come about because we lost in 1988 to the Russians in Seoul. It did not. We it, it came about because Boris Stankovich, the head of FIBA, the World Basketball Association. Uh, wanted to raise the bar for the rest of the world to show them where they have to be, you know, if they want to be as good as the American pros. And he talked David Stern into us getting involved. And 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 we, we weren't even, in, eh, you know, we got dragged into it. People don't understand that. We didn't go in trying to kick ass to show the world who's boss. No, we came in to, to honor what was being asked of us. And we got the dream team. And, and it, I was privileged to be one of the handful of people who can truthfully say that, he was at the first practice in La Jolla and was there for every step of the way to the last game against Croatia in in, in uh, Barcelona. And uh, uh, and there are only two or three of us that can make that statement. Three of us that I can think of. You Jack know, who, just kill, who else? Dick Weiss of the then of the New York Daily News and and still going with Blue Star Media and Jack McCallum of Sports Illustrated, yeah. who has written the definitive book on the topic. Anyone who cares wants to know about the dream team and 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 what they thought about it and the players you you must get his book called the dream team it's easy to find go go amazon go get jack mccallum's book and uh he interviewed every player he couldn't interview chuck because chuck sadly has passed in, in, in 09 chuck daly who was by the way the perfect coach for that team because it, it's a team that needed got and they needed somebody to just keep order you know i mean you know and and chuck had the perfect lack of ego he wasn't going to compete with the players for the spotlight. Oh God! But, but he was able to show them, you know, how what he was perfect. Nobody could have been more suited for the job than Chuck Daly. He was. It was a. It was a great choice. Okay. Now, what? While this, while these games were going on, uh, a young lad in Würzburg, Germany, was watching, and a young lad in and uh, 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 what's the name of the town? Oh, Bahia Blanca in Argentina was watching. Uh, back a couple of young men were watching there and and then and they were watching over the world uh the guy in germany his name was uh, Novitsky, uh you know and the guy in argentina his name was ginobili and uh you know um and this was happening all over the world they were in, they would tell you at, at their hall of fame induction both of them that they were inspired by the dream team it it, it towards vision has is now 
come, you know, he's, he's passed as well, but it's, it's come, he's smiling down from, you know, up there in basketball heaven because of this, the, the NBA isn't, would not, ex, you know, what it is today without these great international oh, players. Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's perhaps one of the greatest things that's happened to a sport. I mean, it's oh. awesome. I mean, you take a look at Denver this year, or you look at Dallas or Genovia. I mean, well, if you're a basketball fan, I mean, Manu Ginobili was one of my favorite players ever. Me too. Me too. That's why I love Manu Ginobili from the first time I saw him in in, uh, India, in uh, Indianapolis in 2002 at the World Championships at, right. in Indianapolis. Uh, uh, I, you know, who, by the way, was the first time I saw Yao Ming and and, and, those, and that championship. And and speaking of China, you know, China, by the way, I thought that when going back 30 years, I thought that the country that would emerge first would be China. It hasn't happened. I'm 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 surprised. I, they were because they were they're so methodical, you know. And, and they right. they developed big men, but they've never developed a creative point guard of any consequence. And um, it's it's uh, that might be you know the system. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't st- it, it doesn't reward creativity, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you know. So we'll see. But um, I thought they would be the country. Uh, you know, the country different countries have made a run. Argentina had a great run. You know, Spain had a great run with with Gasol brothers. They they chased us to the wire in both Beijing and London in, in the uh, championship games, which I both covered. For, you know, fortunately, both of them. Um, so um, it, no, it, it's it, but Central Europe has been great. You know, Lithuania, which was like we call it the Indiana of of Europe. You know, it's, uh, it's about the size of New Jersey, and they turn out you know with these great teams. And, and uh, you know, uh, of course, we we all know about Serbia and Croatia, uh, and on and on. Italy has come and gone. They've kind of waned and whacked a little bit. Uh, Germany, as we can see in these world championships, uh, you know, with with the Wagner brothers and and uh, 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 Dennis Schroeder and 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 uh, uh, and our old friend Daniel Tice uh, are having a good, having a Germany, good run. Right? They're having a good run, and and uh, and and God, God love them. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet five dollars and get two. Hundred in bonus bets, guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet five dollars will get one hundred dollars off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. It absolutely is. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com/Boston. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. Uh, I just, I remember, the, I, I can't remember if it was you or Jackie McMullen who, who told me the story about how Larry, I think I got this right. Larry used to sneak cigarettes with Stoiko Frankovich at halftime. I would be Jar- that would be Jackie's story because I don't know that. Yeah, is that, is, I, I don't doubt it. Right? Do I have my timing right? I don't remember. And yeah, then, no, they played together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good one. I was going to say one thing. One guy has to be mentioned, uh, and that's uh, uh, that uh, we never saw in America the the full you know power of him, and that was Arvidas Sabonis. Sabonis, right? And and he was described at age seventeen, eighteen, as and remember he was on that team that beat us in Seoul. Right. And right. he was described as Bill Walton with a three pointer. Yeah. At that point, Bill Walton is still remains along with Jokic, the two great passing centers of all time. I'm now honoring Jokic by putting him in that same category because I can't deny it, you know. And and uh, but Bill Walton with a three pointer, and that was Arvidas Sabonis. By the time we saw him, it was here in the league. It was many, uh, fr- uh several uh, injuries and and a few box car of of, of vodka uh, later, you know. <laughs> I mean, he famously, you know, didn't make it to the medal ceremony in Barcelona when, because uh, he was, uh, he had celebrated a little heartily. Uh, oh, yes. He was a little, <laughs> a little, a little under the weather. <laughs> but meanwhile, we now have his son, who's one of my favorite NBA players right now, Donatus Sabonis. And, uh, you know, and and he's a damn good facsimile of dad at 6'9". But his father is seven foot. And he, I'll tell you, there's a game I wish I could, uh, maybe it's possible to find it on video. But he played a game in in Melbourne. It's in nineteen in two thousand, and and I forget who they played, but I covered it, and it was a pivot clinic that I I, I came away with just this, this is how this is how God invented and wanted you to play this position, you know, every aspect of the position: passing, shooting, rebounding, defending, uh, orchestrating. The, the, the game revolved around him, and and uh, you know, and the old fashioned pivot, which you know now in the NBA is passe for the most part. But but uh, anyway, he must be mentioned in any of these discussions. 
uh, I'm stealing this from NBA.com. Uh, they have uh, the debate, the greatest international player of all time. And it's a tough one. Well, it is a tough one, but there's two categories. Of, I, for me, there's two categories. The first category is what I call the 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 Americanization of you know the the, the Americanly tinged ones, the gods who either come here as in high school or or at least in college and have played you know competitively in America uh, before they are drafted by the NBA. And and in the first one, I remember of consequence who who actually went to high school here first and then went to college here was Detlef Schwemp, who went to high school in Washington. State right. and then went to the University of Washington. Detlef Schrempf, who was a very, very you know, solid player, very good player, or as or as Larry used to call him, Deltif, but we used to joke about that. But anyway, um, Detlef Schrempf, and uh, uh, there's that, and then of course the greatest international player, in my opinion, uh, you know, by a hair, is Akinem Olajuwon. But of course, he went to the University of Houston. You know, he was discovered by a by, by a by an alum in Africa, and 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 recommended the guy Lewis, who had never seen him play. When he got off that plane, by the way, they they didn't even know how big he was, you know, and, and exactly how big he was. He was bigger. They were very surprised to find out he was taller than they thought. And you know, you know what he's turned it, what he turned into. I think he's the fourth best center in in the history of the game. And and after the and if you have to ask who the other three are, you probably aren't interested in, in this discussion. To start right, 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 right. So we won't even go there. But and and you know my feeling about Walton, the greatest of all, except that the injuries, you know, stunted yeah. his career. Okay, a lot of us great player. So you have that category, and we continue to have those kind of players. Including the young Sabonis now, you know he he went to he went to uh, uh, Gonzaga. Then the ones I really admire are the ones who are pure European, pure uh, non-American. Did not they came here directly and mostly from Europe, and that means there's no argument to me who's the greatest international player. It's Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, it's Dirk. Yeah. Now there are people who would make other arguments for other people, but I'm sorry. I'll tell you, the great what if of all that, you know, how far he would have gone, we'll never know, was the late Drazen Petrovic, who sadly so died sad. of an automobile accident at age probably around 26, yeah. you know, back, way back. And and he he was on his way. He came out of the Olympics with a great re- reputation and 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 he had a great run for the Nets. And he was on his way to something special when he when he when he died in that automobile accident. Um, but uh, uh, it, right now, Dirk Nowitzki to me is, is the answer. But we know we've had some wonderful, uh, you know, Argentines and and and, and Ginobili, who's a fellow Hall of Famer, of course, and is is we both love love him. But uh, I, I got to go with Dirk. I remember uh, my old colleague Donnie Marshall uh, when mm-hmm. we did the Celtics Spring Post Game Show. Sure, he said uh, when J Kid went to when J Kid knew Dirk in Dallas, he'd go, "That guy is the most underdressed superstar ever." He goes, Dirk would show up. He had like, he'd wear the same beat up sneakers forever. Mm-hmm. He goes, you would think the guy was like, I'm not going to say homeless, but you know how, <laughs> you know how the NBA is. I mean, they wear a, a suit for every game. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he, and JK used to say, Dirk would show up and just like sweatpants and it's like he'd wear the same thing every time. Some of these guys got a hundred sneakers, pair of sneakers. Right, yeah. But he'd be like, you know, and Dirk's like, Dirk's got these shoes on, like the soles are falling off the bottom of his feet. You know, he's like, hey, you know, that's just the kind of guy he was. Yeah, you know, and, you know, he's got a big personality. Like, you know, he's not doing color work. He's not doing analyst work. So I hope he's not forgotten because you're right. And our good friend, Cedric Maxwell, really, were you on the end when Max said that? Didn't he say that on EEI when Max said that Dirk was better than Larry or Spencer? No, I just heard about it. I didn't hear it directly. Yeah, he's a player than Larry. And I think it's a great... You know, I mean, maybe as a pure scorer, I don't know. I think it's a great discussion. I mean, I'll always go with Larry, but. No, I mean, they're, they're different players. I mean, they'd be, that'd be a great complimentary pair as a forward because, because Larry, look, the thing about Larry, when you start talking about, it, it's the passing, it, 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 the passing that no other forward except the, except for LeBron. And, and, and he's gotten to the point where I don't even know what to call LeBron. He said, he's the queen on the chessboard and more than. It's astonishing, you know. He's got the ball all the time. That's why the difference between Larry and 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 and, and the assist totals that LeBron's got. And all. Larry and uh, this one, I I can't, you know, I can't give you empirical evidence. I can only give you anecdotal evidence. But and I don't, I wouldn't doubt that I would, my theory would be, you know, uh, uh, agreed upon by experts. Larry Bird got more done with the ball uh, uh, with, le- with less with less handling the ball than any in the history, in history of the game. Oh. He, he was his anticipation was so good when he before he got the pass he knew where he was going next and and what he was going to do with it LeBron brings the ball up LeBron's got the ball all the time yeah, Magic was a point guard 
Larry is a forward. He does not bring the ball up. It did not bring the ball up. Larry, but Larry still and had these these assist totals that would blow your mind. And he, he seemed like he hardly ever had the ball in his hands. You know, the other thing when you talk about anticipation, um, and I also talked to Max about this when Max, when Larry made second team all defense, and, and Max was like, "What? You know, you take Bernard King, Larry." And uh, <laughs> Larry anticipated on defense. No one cheated. Help side defense better than Larry Bird. I was present for a discussion uh, uh, with uh, the then uh, Joe Ma- Joe and Michaelson. Uh, uh, anyway, some NBA guys about the rules. Larry basically forced the rule change because of his his poaching, right? Uh, you know about about defensive three seconds and stuff. And right. Larry, Larry was partly responsible for for a rule change because he was so good at, at cheating, as you just said. He was master cheater. He wasn't a great one-on-one defender. We know that. But let me say this, and I love this about Larry. I think this was a plan, you know, because it, it, he doesn't just stumble into things. Uh, I saw times when guys would be – he'd be guarding a guy, and a guy would be having his way most of the game. And then about two or three minutes to go, the guy thinks he's going to make the same move. And Larry, uh-uh, no, not now. Larry Larry dug in. Larry Larry could had this capacity – to 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 save save it <laughs> save that one on one that uh, they thought they had uh, for the for the judicious moment you know but when it came to you know lane lurking I call it you know he was a master he was an absolute master so in that case he, he, you know he was a but straight up of course we know we know he wasn't a great straight up defender but uh, but he was a great team defender and, oh, and, defender. and oh, you know. so good Bob uh, enjoy yourself say hi to everyone's at the farmer's daughter I believe if it's still around. Uh, uh, we'll check it out. Yeah, I'm not sure if it is up there, but anyways, uh, Goodman will be back from his um, from his holiday. And again, Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tang Wheel Uncle Ride podcast brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Networks. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet five dollars and get two hundred in bonus bets guarantee. Bob, it's always a pleasure. Same here, Gar. New FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV.